Yeah, so we've got crazy rooster teeth news today, Ruby news today as well, obviously related to RT. And I've had so many people tagging me to this news. Thank you all very much for the tags. It is much appreciated. Thank you all. As they say at Dexerto and many other outlets covering this, OG YouTube channel Rooster Teeth shut down by Warner Brothers Discovery. Their podcast network will remain in production. Or as Discussing Film puts it, Rooster Teeth is shutting down after 21 years. We'll take a look at all the specifics in just a moment. First, I'd actually like to issue an apology because I want to say I'm sorry to you guys because I mentioned multiple times in the past that there was another Ruby slash Rooster Teeth video I wanted to do because things were looking worse than ever. But as you know, I never ended up getting that video out and now here we are. I could list reasons for why things ended up like this. For example, the never ending Niji Sanji arc, which we've had over like the last month and other stuff that I've wanted to cover as well and some personal stuff going on too. But ultimately the fact is I've allocated my time in the way I did and it's my fault that I didn't get that Ruby slash Rooster Teeth video done. And for anyone who's been expecting that, I apologize. And I even feel like disappointed in myself too, but I can't go back and change that. That's the past now. So let's take a look at the news that we've got today. Variety reports, RT is biting the dust after more than two decades. Parent company Warner Brothers Discovery, after unsuccessful attempts to sell the unprofitable fandom, gaming, and comedy entertainment division, is shutting down Rooster Teeth's operations. RT general manager Jordan Levin announced the shutdown of Austin-based Rooster Teeth at an all-hands meeting Wednesday and in a memo distributed to staff. The closure of Rooster Teeth will result in layoffs of its approximately 150 full-time employees and will throw dozens of contracts and content creators out of work as well. Full quote being, he says, It's with a heavy heart I announced that Rooster Teeth is shutting down due to challenges facing digital media resulting from fundamental shifts in consumer behavior and monetization across platforms, advertising, and patronage. Our legacy is not just a collection of content, but a history of pixels burned into our screens, minds, and hearts. Variety continues, saying, Warner Brothers Discovery is currently in talks to sell the rights to certain Rooster Teeth catalog content and intellectual property, such as the popular anime-style series Ruby, pioneering sci-fi spoof Red vs. Blue, and Michael B. Jordan's animated mecha series Genlock. In addition, WBD is seeking to sell the Roost Podcast Network with shows spanning gaming, true crime, fandom, comedy, and food, which, for the time being, will continue to operate. They then mention how Rooster Teeth celebrated its 20th birthday last year with the launch of new logos and a new tagline, uh, Just Plain being the new tagline. And here's the old logo, and here's the new logo, which, by the way, that in of itself was a weird situation. A lot of people were like, what's up with this new logo? Uh, many people saying it was much worse than the old logo. Skipping down a lot, they mention that Levin had recently announced that the 2024 RTX, that's like the Rooster Teeth convention for anyone who doesn't know, that the 2024 RTX would be canceled, which was a part of the news segment that I wanted to run that I mentioned earlier that I never ended up doing, but uh, definitely important to mention that. So yeah, that was some more writing on the wall. Uh, the wall that was already full of writing of how bad RT's business was going. And above that, talking about the decline of Rooster Teeth's operation, saying that they had operated a subscription video on demand service from its earliest days and in 2016 rebranded the service as First. At its peak, RT's First had about 225,000 paying members at the height of the popularity of Ruby and Genlock, but has fallen off to about 60,000 today. Warner Brothers Discovery will be communicating with subscribers within the next few weeks about the service's shutdown. Yeah, well, over the years, they screwed over their own first members multiple times, from price hikes to things like taking Ruby off first and then putting it on Crunchyroll. You had RT's paying members, their first members, saying things like, why are we paying to get the content first if we're not actually getting it first now, and instead Crunchyroll's getting it first? And regarding the price hikes, you had some of their paying members criticizing the decision only for an RT employee, this dude who was like named Demono or something, to my recollection, like come out and just like insult the paying members <laughs> it was it was a crazy situation. Then that dude was mad about me for reporting on it, by the way, which only made it more funny. I can't believe that dude, that Demono dude, was like, if you if you don't want to pay for our price increase, you're just bad with your money. <laughs> Let me know if you remember that stuff, if you've been watching the channel since back then, man. Crazy stuff over the years. As for Ruby, going back to Ruby specifically, we're now on the Ruby subreddit, and you can see people are speculating that Crunchyroll may buy Ruby, saying, anyone else think uh, Crunchyroll may buy it up? After all, they helped with Ice Queendom, and the exclusivity deal for Volume 9 was a huge success. So, I mean, I don't know if I'd call it a huge success when it arguably also led to uh, the downfall of RT and making their first membership even less worthy. Plus, I think the viewing numbers for uh, Volume 9 
uh, are, are debatable for being claimed as a huge success but uh yeah people still trying to cope over this news i think a little bit plus there's the whole issue with crunchyroll itself being like terrible which this writer actually points out saying is crunchyroll really the company people want to hold their rights to anything they like haven't they been scummy recently the merger with funimation has ended with them getting rid of that service erasing any digital purchases people made from there and no way of getting them transferred even planning if not already hike up their prices aren't monopolies just the best they say that with sarcasm, I'm sure. Uh, they don't pay their translators very well or treat them very well. They even talked about looking into AI translations. Although, you know, many people uh, dislike Crunchyroll, but also dislike the localizers. So that's a whole other topic. But yeah, just saying. Oh, look at this. If Ruby does go to another company, they better bring back all the original cast and crew to finish the story. The OP is like, no thanks. I'm fine with some voice actors returning, but the writers can go get a real job because they helped kill it different redditors saying agreed if someone does buy it at this point they would be better off starting the story over than continuing the garbage fire the story has become how times have changed guys because like in the past if you would have posted something like this on the ruby subreddit you would have had a bunch of ruby fanatics harassing you endlessly and like the moderators banning you like these fanatics would have come out with pitchforks and that's been the case for a long time even up until very recently like any reasonable criticism of Ruby posted on the main Ruby subreddit would just get you harassed by fanatics. It was so bad that people made a separate Ruby subreddit called Ruby Critics just so they could criticize the show somewhere. And I'm sure that didn't help RT, the fact that the Ruby fandom became so dang toxic because I know for a fact that the toxicity of the fandom in of itself had drove a lot of people away from the show. You had the, the quality of the show going down plus the fandom toxicity increasing. So people were like, yo, I'll just watch something else and be in a different fandom. Like, I don't need this in my life. And that's pretty much how I felt too. I mean, to be quite frank, even to this day, there's still things I like about old Ruby. It definitely had potential to be so much greater than how it all ended up. You know, years ago, I was cosplaying as Crow Braun when a character from Ruby at multiple anime conventions. I have a Ruby coffee mug, Ruby posters, Ruby merch. I had a Ruby hat. <laughs> like, I was a pretty hardcore Ruby fan, man. And it's just disappointing that it all ended up like this. Although... Once again, I'll mention over the years, the writing has been on the wall that things would end up like this. So I'm not surprised at all. Uh, you know, just kind of reminiscing, I guess. Enough about me, though. We'll end with some more public reception. Going back to Twitter and this tweet from Discussing Film, RT shuts down after 21 years. Some of the comments. May not have had the best final years, but the company created some of my favorite stuff growing up. And how did they even survive for 10 years? That means no more camp camp. Thought new season was coming. The Rooster Teeth we remember, RVB, and the legendary Montium will all be remembered. Rest well. And Ruby will remain unfinished. Not that I've watched since volume 6, but still, it sucks for those who have watched it up until now. They have no one to blame but themselves. Same with the fall of Achievement Hunter. Red vs. Blue will live on forever, and the end of the era. And it looks like the Downfall of Rooster Teeth playlist, which has over 50 of my videos covering RT's downfall over the years, has been completed. All right, I'm going to leave it there, guys. News just dropped. There you go. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. And thank you all for tuning in. I will see you in the comments and, of course, in the next segment. If you enjoyed this coverage, please consider liking and or subscribing. Your support is much appreciated. And as mentioned, I look forward to seeing you in the comments and in the next one.